Minamoto Yori is said to have been born in the wrong age, but what does that mean? On the surface, he appears to be a somewhat well-mannered, kind, and helpful individual who wants to maintain the peace and protect his sister. As he's introduced in the story, he even stops Saber from using her phantasm to defeat the enemy because it would destroy the area around them as well as cause casualties and further collateral damage. But deep down inside, what he cares about most is winning. Everything he does is in pursuit of victory to understand his potential opponents inside and out. That way he can figure out how to beat them when he needs to. This side of him is somewhat unfit for an era of peace, choosing to live by the sword rather than live as a human. And it all started when he met Miyamoto Musashi. In the past, Iori was the last survivor of a gang that Musashi killed. Mesmerized by the swordsmanship, he strives to beat the man who would become his master and foster father. Musashi recognized that Iori could have chose a more peaceful path to living, but rather chooses the blade and thus would become Musashi's ultimate and final opponent in life. This makes him similar to his foil, Shimemon, who is also a survivor. That of the Shimabara Rebellion, Shimemon left as a scarred individual who was vengeful, a living embodiment of that incident raging at the system. But he shows his true colors unlike Yori. Now, while Yori does appear to show socially acceptable traits for the time he is in, I would say his main struggle centers around maintaining the balance of the mask he puts on and not letting his inner desires take full control of him. It is after his battle with the female Musashi, fulfilling the promise of her male counterpart, defeating her with a surprise finisher that he learned from Sasaki Kojiro, the Swallow Reverse, a skill delving into the realm of true magic, this is where his fate can take either one of two outcomes. If he decides to destroy the waxing moon vessel, he can maintain the peace, knowing that the vessel is no good for this world, stopping those who would choose to use it for their own personal desires, and living on into the future, embracing the light until his world is pruned. On the other hand, if he chooses not to destroy it, he'll then have to fight Saber, who acts in the name of righteousness. While Yori considers that while the vessel is still around, there will be more fighting, and thus he continue to do the thing that he loves, living and dying by the blade, in this case by Saber's blade, leaving Saber to destroy the vessel and leaving Kai alone with Yori's remains in the same place in which Yori defeated his master from another world, like master, like pupil, and thus dwelling in the darkness where only death awaits him. Yui Shosetsu sees Yori as a light, something that gives her hope, but then later, depending on your ending, we'll see it covers a darkness, representing Yori's darker impulses. Saber believes Yori is choosing to discard his excess, that being his kindness. As someone who relates to Yori as somebody who took a similar path in life. But of course, Yori sees this as something different, as I have explained already. Other servants during flight will see that Yori, through his eyes and sword play, has a darker side to him, but don't comment too much on it, leaving that for the story to tell. And Musashi acknowledges that the type of person Yori is has no place in a world like this anymore, with Shemon wanting Yori to show his true colors because he can see what 
virtually end Yori. In conclusion, he lives to fight anyone, be they enemy or former ally as seen with the Don't Destroy It ending. In his pursuit to master the way of the sword, the question is, will he give into his raw desires, being selfish, or choose to maintain the peace he's been upholding as a proper person would and should do?